thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. Today I'm working in my quarantine art journal and my topic is on wearing a face mask. So stay tuned and sit back and watch this video. It's not too long and it'll show you how I created this page and maybe give you a fun idea of something new and different to try with collaging and maybe backgrounds. So stay tuned and let's have some fun in our quarantine art journal. Um, this is what I'm going to use for my image on my page. I'm going to do a background and then I'm going to collage this over the top. And I just want to show you real quick how to make a um, image like this. If you don't know how to draw or you don't like to draw uh, or you have a hard time getting perspective, there's a really easy way that you can create your own um, collage sheet for your art First journal. thing you want to do is find in a magazine a relatively large face and um, nice big eyes and something that's going to be easy to work with and then you're going to want to use a waterproof permanent brush marker this is a Prisma Premier brush pen so here's what the tip looks like it's just a soft brush marker and you're going to use deli sheets so get some deli sheets and you put your deli sheet over your image like this and then you just hold it in place and you use your brush pen to trace out the image. So where it's a thick line, you're going to push down and use that brush part of your pen. Where it's thin, you're going to just lightly use the tip. That's a fine tip, so you can make a fine line like this. And then you just kind of want to follow along the image as best as you can to... create this image and you don't want it to be perfect it doesn't have to be perfect because you're doing just sketchy it's going to be in your art journal and you just basically want the semblance of this face that you're copying and drawing so I'm going over her eyes And I'm making her eyebrows like they are. You can do some lines like this that are kind of just sketchy for places that are shadowed. Her mouth. And I'm just kind of going fast here just to show you, but and then you can add in hair. This doesn't have hair, it's a Nike ad. And her neck. Can't see it, but you could add that in. Okay, so now when you remove this, actually I'm going to put a little shadow over here. There isn't one, but I know that that would be the side of the face that's not in the light, so I'm going to add my own. Okay, so then when you move, remove that, look what you're left with. You've got a face image. Maybe you didn't know how to draw a face or you wanted to put a face down on your page but you don't really know how to draw one. Now you have a great face to add over your background. Isn't that fun? So that's what I did with this. I just traced it on but instead of drawing her details of her nose and her mouth I drew on a face mask and I'm going to use that as my collage. my background I want to use some torn pattern papers so I'm going to just do some random tearing and put some of these pieces down some of this with the numbers on it would be cool
And I also want to use some old book text, but before I tear it to put it down on the page, I'm going to take some stamps, some mandala stamps, and these are um, by My Mind's Eye. And I'm going to take my acrylic block, and I'm going to use Ranger Archival Ink. This color is called Seafarer. And I'm going to stamp my image onto my book text. And I'm going to do a couple of different patterns of that, of mandalas. Just kind of stamping all over the book text that I want to use on the page. And now what I want to do is tear my book text sheets, tear off that white edge and tear it into squares that I can use on my page. So I'm just tearing it in random strips and you get those Pieces, you get little bits and pieces of your image that you stamped. Mandala stamps work really, really well for something like this. Uh, big floral patterns, if you have a rubber stamp that's a floral pattern and it's kind of big with heavy lines, that would work really well. Okay, so when you tear your strips, now I'm going to tear them into squares. So now you can see my thought process on that, that as you lay out these pieces, there's little bits and pieces of what you stamped, and it just creates a lot of really fun interest in your background. So you've got just plain book text, you've got pieces that have just a little of that stamped image, and pieces that have a lot of the stamped image and it just really makes that background look super fun. So now I'm just laying them out in random order and then the other pieces that I've torn out as well and I'm going to just start laying them down with some matte gel medium to apply them to the page. This is what it looks like with my stamped book images and some torn papers down on my page using matte gel medium. Now I'm going to just put a little bit of gesso. Um, I don't need to cover the whole thing in gesso. What I want to do is just put a little bit here and there and around those edges just to break up the rough edges. I like to break that up and then kind of tie in those images a little bit. I don't want to cover them. I like them. I like that book text showing and I love the stamped part but see what it looks like when you just start to put a little bit of gesso and tie in those edges, rough edges. See the difference between that and that. Yep, I get messy. I use my fingers to blend it. If the paintbrush is being just too harsh or covering up too much, then I use my hands. Until I get the look I'm going for. There, see how that looks? I love that. Now I'm just going to add in a little bit of color, just some hints here and there. I'm just using acrylic paint. And my brush is wet, which I like because it's going to thin that paint out a little bit. 
I don't want it to be super heavy. And some pops. Pops of color. I love pops of color. There. Some light color. If you want it a little darker, add a little more. And I'm just making some streaks. And I'm going to dry it in between each color so that I don't contaminate. I'm going to just take my heat tool and just dry that out a little bit. go on to my next color and I rinsed my brush because I didn't want this to be muddied I want it to be nice and vibrant so I did rinse my brush out a little bit of, of fuchsia. When you mix that with orange you get this just really gorgeous color so I'm just adding a pop of that, pop of this and a pop of that. And I don't want to color the whole thing. I want to keep it interesting. So I'm going to leave some white space Yes, yes, yes. I love it. In fact, I'm going to leave it just like that. And sometimes you have to remind yourself that less is more, so you don't want to muddy up what you're doing or make it too covered up or solid. You want to just play around and just put little tiny bits of paint and little bits of ink and you get a lot more if you let that background breathe a little bit and show through and then look at that cool book text that I stamped on. It just lends itself to being more decorative the less that you do. Now I'm going to take a stencil and I'm going to add in some stenciling in here and I know that seems a little bit crazy and bold because I am going in black but I'm not covering it up like when you I'm trying to explain this when you stencil and you make it solid I'm stenciling it and I'm making it look patchy so I'm not pressing down very hard with my cosmetic sponge so that I'm getting the pattern but yet you can still see through that uh, that paint or see through the stencil image hope that makes sense to what I'm trying to say so let me show you again I've got my cosmetic sponge and I have paint on it and I've dabbed it out to thin it out, thin out that paint, and I'm being really light-handed going through this stencil. I'm making sure that the stencil pattern is there, but I'm not making the paint like stark solid black. And then when I lift it, that's what you get. It's more of a stippled stencil look. I'm going to bring that pattern over here just in a couple little places. I'm just adding it for interest.
So I wrote a little, um, a little poem, kind of a poem that I want to put on this, and I have uh, typed it out on my word processor. I just used Microsoft Word, and I printed it on vellum. So vellum is see-through, and you can put it in your printer. And I've let the letters dry so that they don't smear. And I'm going to tear this out. And I'm going to put it right here over her mask using my matte medium. And I'm being careful not to go over the words with my brush because on vellum um, when you print on your inkjet printer on vellum it does tend to smear so I'm being really careful about that not to go over it and then smear it so I just put it behind it and laid it down and I'm just pressing in those edges now I'm going to take some Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2. I'm using a flesh and I'm just going to add a little bit of flesh tone in here and blend it with my finger. I just want to have a little hint of flesh tone since it is a portrait. Neo colors are just so awesome for adding color pops of color to a page and you can just blend them with your finger like that so it just makes that face look a little more portrait and a little lighter color here by our eyes and white I'm going to go in here and add white in the whites of her eyes just brought that to life. I love it. And a little Uniposca pen to make the little highlights in her eyes. It's just going to make it pop a little bit more. Just makes it a little more artsy. Now I'm going to take a black Stabilo pencil and I'm going to come in and do some shadows. I'm imagining that the light is coming from this side, so there's going to be shadow over here. And I'm going to just blend it out with my finger, so I'm just sketchy, being sketchy, and I'm being shady. <laughs> That's funny. And I'm just going to add some shadow to this side. And some in here where that shadow would be in the crease of her eye and just blending it out and see how that just makes it that face kind of stand off the page a little bit more. And even though this is in the side of the sun, there's still a slight shadow down that nose. Let's put that in. Give her a little dimension. Let's do some over here. Shadow along the side of her face. I love it. Love it. And cheek. Let's shadow that a little to give her a cheekbone. Perfect. And under her chin, right here, where her neck would be, chin would be shadowing. It's a great place to put some shadow. And I think I'm going to add some 
some more lines here to make her have more defined look of hair. I like it. So I used some more Caran d'Ache in some brighter colors, some more orange, a little bit more of the fuchsia to just add a little bit more color and to bring your focal eye all around the page. When you're doing a layout, it's good to, um, if you put a color here, put it here and here because it makes your eye travel around your design. So in the description box below, click the little uh, arrow, downward arrow, and there will be a playlist, um, a link to the playlist for all the videos in the Quarantine Art Journal series. So you can start from the beginning and see all the videos I've done working in my Quarantine Art Journal. If you want to start making one yourself and you want to look at all the videos, that's an easy place to find them is in the playlist. There's also a list of the supplies that I've used on this page. So here's my page. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it inspired you to create something fun in your quarantine art journal relating to the fact that we have to wear masks these days if we go out in public. So thanks for stopping by and go make some art because art soothes the heart. Mm -hmm.